to Fleming. I, I expect you remember the influential children's television programs I made in the 1960s and 70s. <laughs> Mrs. Popjoy's Magic Attic. Nicholas the Mischievous Cupboard. <laughs> yes. Wonderful days. Well, I'm here as part of a, a retrospective national tour of my work, and I've been travelling up and down the, uh, the, the, the central line uh, ever since I was evicted from my home last month. Wandering uh, endlessly through the tunnel. Now, uh, today I have time to show you just the very first of the programmes I made. I'll show you a short clip briefly, but let me tell you first how it all began. Now, as a child, I was fascinated by television. I grew passionate. This was what I wanted to do. So I went up to my father one day, I was only eight, only eight, and I said to him, Father, I'm going to work in television. And he just laughed. Gave me a winning smile. He was a very condescending man. <laughs> I said, Peter, that sounds like a wonderful idea, a wonderful idea. But perhaps when you're older, when you're older indeed. Well, naturally, I did what any enterprising young boy would do in that situation. I, I got up, I didn't say another word. I just left my father's study. And I went down the stairs, and down the, down the hallway, out of the front door, out of our house. And I, I didn't look back. I walked down the garden, down the road, and I kept walking, I just I kept walking. Kept walking. <laughs> and never saw my family again. <laughs> uh, I did go back to visit them once when I was, uh, when I was 11, but uh, they, they, they'd moved away. <laughs> so there was a children's home uh, nearby, so I went in and told them that I was an orphan. And the place was so badly run, they never thought to check. So I was able to, to go on staying there well into my late thirties. <laughs> Saved up for a few odd jobs, put together a makeshift studio, and then set some friends and neighbours to work on, on bits and pieces I've been writing. And this is the very first programme we made, commissioned by the BBC in the autumn of 1962, Professor Zaney's Mad Laboratory. Now, this is a wonderful, fun series about a lovely old eccentric designed to get children really excited about the world of science and, and innovation. Now, before we begin, before we begin, I should say that I, I can't screen any of the original footage from any of my programmes. The BBC have, have wiped every last copy from, from my archives. Uh, Presumably by mistake. <laughs> so I shall be recreating them all on the stage and playing all of the characters myself, as everyone else involved has either since died or, in two cases, stopped talking to me. <laughs> but without further ado, this is the very first episode of <coughs> Professor Zaney's Mad Laboratory. And may I say, it's wonderful that my work is finally being treated with the respect it deserves. Could we have the music, please? Good morning, Professor. Why, it's young Cliff from down the road. And what brings you to my laboratory today, young man? I was wondering, Professor, if you happen to have any new inventions ready today. Well, scrambly dangerous, little You're in luck. I have just this moment completed my latest contraption. Wowee. Yeah, uh, I'll just go and fetch it for you. Da, 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 da. Behold, the book of the future, made entirely from stainless steel. <laughs> stainless steel? Yes, a solid lump of the stuff. Impossible to open and impossible to read. <laughs> For the great beauty of art lies in its mysteries. <laughs> Cut off from the words, Cliff, readers shall have to engage their imaginations like never before. It will mean a new dawn for literature in our lifetime. <laughs> Professor, yes. <laughs> you've done it again! Completation! That's what you leave your family for. <laughs> Where, where they are. Do let me know. I shall be just outside there for the next 
two or, or, or three nights. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm coming to the end of my time now. I, I can feel it. <laughs> but, uh, and so it just leaves me to say thank you all very much and have a lovely evening. And please, please don't forget about me. Good night. <laughs>